So this would be one of the first scientifically accurate models of a snowflake. Carefully constructed back in 1940, Edwin Reber used early plastics to make these models, originally for the Cranbrook Institute of Science in Michigan. So they're all six-sided. They were based on new photographs of snow crystals taken by Corydon Grafton, who was a chemist. The scientists uh, in Michigan were, were doing experiments to, to seed clouds for the first time with dry ice that would make the clouds uh, snow or rain. So these were made at a time when this, when we were really learning a lot more about how the individual shapes of the snow crystals differ based on how dry and cold the air is. Dry cold air would have produced the columnar structures which have two faces on the crystal. The models come in several different shapes and all represent the six-sided structure of an ice crystal. Now housed at Nova Scotia's Museum of Natural History, the 83-year-old models were recently rediscovered by curator of geology Tim Fedak and put on display. They need to be kept away from any area with high UV light as the rare early plastics would degrade very quickly. FedEx took a geological interest in the snow crystals because they are a mineral, just like quartz. These are, by definition, are uh, mineral growth and of um, a particular element, in this case water, and it has a specific chemical formula. So by definition, it is a geology mineral. It happens to melt at room temperature. While no two snowflakes that fall from the sky are the same, these models are an accurate portrayal of the snow crystals seen in each of the early photographs.